everyone and welcome to my books I found in my shed video. About five years ago now we moved into this house and this house was actually my nan's house and we were moving in with her and that meant that we had to try and combine both of our houses worth of stuff which meant that we didn't have enough room to fit all of our books into the house at the time. But now five years later we finally have some space which means we actually went through the shed and actually looked at what we had and brought out some of the books that we wanted to keep and the rest of them have all gone to the charity shop. So today what I thought I'd do is go through some of the books we kept because these are the ones I'm really really interested in. First thing I have is Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. This is the first one in the series. I I think it is um pretty sure it is I mean there's nothing to say it's not anyway um this is a book all about a serial killer who is a forensic scientist who works for the Miami PD I think it is uh yeah Miami police force and uh the reason why I wanted to pick this one up despite the fact that I'm not generally a contemporary reader or a thriller reader or anything else is because I was a big fan of the Dexter TV show which was based on this book series I absolutely loved the TV show when it was coming out I watched it like as soon as it came out every single week I absolutely adored the TV show with the exception of that final episode and then the final episode of the spin-off as well we don't talk about those two episodes they are erased from my memory I just enjoyed the rest of the series but either way I really want to check out um, what the original books are like. I admit that my mum has read these and she's a bit like eh they were alright but they weren't the best but I do want to give it a go because I did really enjoy the TV show and I am curious about the origins of the TV show and also I really want to like expand what I'm reading and things like this in terms of like genre and stuff like this and I mean why not just start with a book that we already own so that's why it's on this list and and I wanted to keep it for that exact reason so very excited to read it. I then also have four Tanya Huff books. The first ones are all of these which is the Blood book so that's volume one which is Blood Price and Blood Trial then uh, uh, Blood Lines and Blood Pact for volume two then the final one is Blood Debt and Blood Bank and all of these are essentially paranormal investigation type stories and this is what the Blood Ties TV show came out of and I was obsessed with Blood Ties when I was 11. I loved that TV show. It's all about Vicky who was a um, like cop who's now a private investigator and she ends up teaming up with the 400 year old vampire Henry Fitzroy who is actually the illegitimate son of King Henry VIII and they solve supernatural crimes together and I loved that TV show. Henry was one of my first loves, um, was definitely one of my first fictional crushes, definitely part of the reason why I love vampires so much and I've been intrigued about this entire series for a while now ever since I um, remembered it existed and I've already talked about this actually before in my vampire books I want to read video which I'll leave a link to up above I mentioned these books then um, I had no idea where they were and now I do thankfully so that's very exciting very excited to give all of these a go and see if it reignites my love for Henry Fitzroy and if the TV show if I can find it holds up or not and just to see exactly what all the books are about as well I really want to give like paranormal like private investigator type stuff ago so very excited to read these and then I also had another Tanya Huff book which is the Smoke and Ashes book which is a, a vampire novel about uh, vampires obviously and wizards and TV terror because we're following a fledgling wizard who is now the trainee is assistant director to a vampire TV show but there's now a demonic convergence and this kind of thing which sounds really fun I will say that this one says it's quite sexy and things like this so I think there's going to be a bit of spicy scenes in here which I am not used to and I don't know how I feel about them and I have a feeling that Blood Ties will also have that but we'll see um, uh, but I am still very very intrigued I'm very intrigued by like the genre and things so why not give it a go for free with books we already own again and see exactly what I think and maybe you know relive my childhood in some form or other so yeah excited a little bit nervous won't lie but definitely want to give these a go as well hence why they got kept we also have I am number four by Pitticus Law now this one I just know that Alex Pettifer was in the movie if I remember rightly and the fact that it's a sci-fi and they're all being hunted it says in the beginning we were nine we left when we were very young almost too young to remember almost 
And now three are gone. We are here to keep our race alive, which was almost entirely obliterated. We're just trying to su uh, survive. Six are left, but we are hunted and the hunters won't stop until they've killed us all. They caught number one in Malaysia, number two in England, and number three in Kenya. I am number four. I, I, I know what that I am next. Um, that's all I really know about this series. Um, I know it's a sci-fi and obviously it's about aliens and people being hunted down and this kind of thing. And I remember really enjoying the movie, but again, we bought the book and then I never read it for no apparent reason. Um, so when it came out of the shed, I was like, ooh, this sounds interesting. Um, I remember this vaguely. I want to give it a go. So... I definitely now want to give it a go. This is a book we have owned since 2010 and it's now 2023. I still haven't read it yet. It's been in my house or in my shed, I should say, for 13 years. It's about time I read it. So I'm very, very intrigued by this and I'm very excited to hopefully read it soon. Probably not if my track record is anything to go by, but you never know. And then the final thing I have is the big book of little poems, which is not something I generally would pick up, but I remember really, really enjoying this when I was a kid. And I literally remember reading this over and over and over again when I was a kid, which is shocking because I usually don't do poetry. But this one is specifically all about very short poems that has been put together by Giles Brandreth and Roger McGough, and it's got um, poems that have been written and chosen by like Quentin Blake and Billy Connolly. I always want to say Colony, so apologies for that, but it's Connolly. I always have to just quickly remind myself of that whenever I'm like saying his name, otherwise I will just say Colony. But anyway, this is a bunch of fully illustrated little poems and they've got loads of them written by loads of different people there's like different um drawings throughout here as well there's ones in here from like um Scylla Black who chose one and wrote it as well there's um like who else have we got in here Spike Milligan um loads of people in here Roger McGough like I said earlier there's um I, I'm just having a look if there's any other people I recognize um, Carol Ann Duffy, I remember stutter studying her at school, if I remember rightly. Robert Graves, um, there's also, like, loads of people in here. There's loads and loads and loads of people in here. Loads of, like, um, Carol Ann Duffy, actually, as well. Some of them chosen by her, some of them written by her. Um, there's, like, Dick King Smith as well. Gary Lineker, apparently. There's loads of them in here as well. Joanna Lumley as well there's loads and loads and loads of people in here um essentially and there's like loads of different drawings in here and i just remember really really enjoying this and there's still poems in here that i still remember like um where is it uh well there's the one by victoria wood which is just no rhyme no time um which i just find quite fun because that's how i generally feel about poetry to be honest or at least that's how i've been made. Oh, there's one by Sandy Tops freaking here. Sorry, I'm just going through these and going, wait a minute, I've seen loads of these people on TV over the years, generally on QI. And like Sandy Toxfic is in here, she's written one. Um, there's ones in here as well that I just remember really enjoying. Like, there's just so many in here. So like, there's another one in here that's called Rabbit Spring by Brian Patton. It goes, snow goes, ice thaws, warm pours. And that's it, which I just think is really sweet. And there's loads of them in here. I didn't remember that one specifically, but I do remember like, where's it gone? Like the Ode to the Invisible Man, which is just a blank page, which I didn't remember either, but one of the ones I remember is called Write On by Martin Hall, and it says, I've been writing this poem for two solid hours, and I've only done three lines. Oh, four. And I, that just pops into my head on occasion quite often, and I'm just flicking through this and going, I remember some of these quite a lot. I'm pretty sure, like, there's just quite a few in here that I just remember really, really enjoying. So I just really wanted to have another flick through um, and give it all a read again and see if there are actually poems I still like to this day and if I'm just being slightly prejudiced because I spent a lot of time studying poetry in school and it just kind of killed that love of poetry for me. I don't know. So that's why I kept this one and I'm really excited to flick through it and maybe share a few on here as well and stuff like this. So yeah, very excited to re-own this one and just rediscover it and rediscover my childhood 
apparently all of this was just rediscovering my childhood and my teenage years in various ways but and I mean there were others as well that I could have mentioned as well here but to be honest the rest of them were my mum's and these ones were I'm gonna call mine even though a lot of them are more like hers I've just nicked off her um, basically but most of them though are books I'm just not really interested in or they've just gone down the charity shop because neither of us were interested in them anymore and we just have no room for them so these are the ones I kept so I thought I'd share them with you and now that I've done that I'm gonna go and possibly read some of these so that's why I'm gonna leave this video so I hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give me a thumbs up comment down below tell me the strangest place you recently found a book I'd love to know or if you don't have that much time leave me a magnifying glass emoji down below so let me know that you were here I'll also leave a link as well down below to all my social media if you want to check it out including to the comic book sanctum which is my website dedicated to Marvel comics which is filled with all things secret invasion scrolls all the rest of it if you're interested in that as well as a link as well down below to my Etsy store this sells bookish merch if you're interested in that as well or if you just want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video until next time everyone bye <laughs>